Hey there, Benjamin here. Today, I just wanted to make a quick video for you and go through some of the suggestions, uh, thoughts, feedback, and, and so on. Just a few ideas that I think would be very, very helpful at increasing your overall organic traffic rankings and more importantly, your organic revenue uh, at Rep Fitness. So I have a bit of a list here that I wanna go over. I think the video is gonna be like 10, 15 minutes long. So, yeah, uh, just uh, stick around. I'll, I promise I'll provide as much value as possible and let's jump uh, straight into it. So the first thing that I would like to point out is your domain name. So whenever, whenever I start and work on an SEO project, I really like to have a domain name, ideally with the keyword inside, ideally with the target keyword inside. In your case, just because of the, uh, the domain, so rep fitness, you have the word fitness inside of the domain, which I mean, just this alone gives you a big bo uh, boost and advantage over your competitors because you have a partial match, partial match domain, meaning that any keywords that have the word fitness inside of them will be much easier to rank. So just wanted to point this out because when you're comparing and selecting different target keywords, if you go for the keywords with the word fitness inside, it's going to be much easier for you to rank for those than some of your competitors, even if those competitors have stronger websites and have higher authority. Um, the next thing that I want to mention are your subdomains. So at the moment, the main two domains that I identified here is just the German subdomain and also the, like the Den, uh, I think it was for some reason the DK. So for example, DK redirects to, I don't know, as you just saw there, sometimes it redirects me to, um, to Germany. I don't know. I'm not sure why, but sometimes it happens. Uh, the main thing that I want to point out here is the fact that you have all of your subdomain, like that you have all of the different Shopify markets on subdomains. Now, I'm not sure if this is done intentionally or maybe you have, uh, you know, different payment processors or different Shopify installs or whatever it might be uh, that, that's happening in the background. But something that I would like to point out that is extremely, extremely important and that can really help you stand out in international markets is the way that you're currently doing this. So essentially with, uh, with SEO uh, and how Google looks at domains, Google will always look at the main domain, in your example, repfitness.com as the most powerful domain because it's the domain where you have all the links pointed to, where you have all the traffic going to, uh, it's just the, the domain where you have all of the authority. Now, whenever you create a subdomain, Google actually looks at that domain, uh, the subdomain is a completely different domain. So it would be the same as if you had the subdomain, uh, this one, de.repfitness.com, it would be this, it would be the same as if you had, I don't know, repfitness.de. It would be, it's considered as like completely, uh, completely separate domain. The reason why I'm saying this is because a very easy way for you to be able to leverage your existing link profile and existing domain authority much better would be to use Shopify markets in the subdirectory. So for example, instead of having de.repfitness.com, we could move repfitness.com slash de, for example. So we would move the subdomain to the subdirectory. And now the German store, the, the store targeting Germany would essentially be part of the, uh, would essentially be part of the main domain. This would mean that you would now be able to utilize the power of your main domain to also rank in Germany. Now, of course, you would also need to um, translate a lot of this content into German, and I'm not sure if that's the focus right now, but the same strategy would apply not only for Germany, but also all of the other markets. I believe that at the moment you just have Germany and Denmark. It would represent a very, very big opportunity for you guys, um, just because the domain, the main domain is already quite strong. So it's just something I wanted to point out. The next thing that I wanted to, that I want to mention. So for example, if I just open up the sandbag, uh, the product, so what you will see here is that you have about 743 different reviews. So these are reviews obviously from, from customers and so on. And it's something that we can leverage in Google that they're currently not leveraging. So let me show you. So for example, if I just open up this, uh, this sandbag, okay, there's another market here, by the way, it's uh, the, 
Canadian market. Uh, so this would be another another one to migrate to the main domain slash CA, which would allow you to rank better in Canada. Anyways, as I was saying, we have the Sandbags product. This product has, let me refresh it here, 743 re reviews. Now, what we're not currently utilizing is something called product schema. And I'm not entirely sure what the what the app is that you're using to collect product reviews on Shopify. But what I can tell you is that you're currently missing out on uh, you're currently missing out on reviews and stars being displayed in Google. So, for example, this is uh, one of our other clients that we work with, and if you just check through some of these um, ratings here, some of these pages and their products, you will see that they have the stars displaying, they have the rating displayed, they have the number of reviews, and they also have the price displayed. And this is very, very simple to integrate. Literally, all that you need to do is you just need to integrate the script that you have on your uh, on your product pages so that Google can actually read it. This is, this is called uh, the product schema. So all that we need to do is we just need to add a bit of code to the product.liquid file, and then Google would be able to read all of these reviews and display them inside of Google search results. The reason why this is such a big deal is because when Google can read and uh, process these reviews properly, not only will you get the, the stars under it, but more importantly, when users see, for example, sandbags, and they see three results at the top, you being one of them, the two other results maybe don't they don't have the, the stars, but your search results has stars and reviews under it. Of course, the user is going to click on your result because they're it's just going to capture more of their attention. You know, it's going to seem more trustworthy, more legit. And this creates a cycle because the more clicks that you get to, to your page, the higher up you will rank anyway, because the higher your CTR, the higher your organic CTR is, the um, the better you will end up ranking just because Google will see your result as more relevant. So really makes a, a big difference. Another suggestion that I would have is if I go under, let's say, flat, flat benches collection. So let me just open up this one here. So if you just take a look here in the URL, we have collections and we have slash flat benches. And now if I open up a product, we have collections, name of the collection, and then products, and then name of the product. Now, what happens if I remove the collections and name of the collection from the URL? I'm essentially able to access the same exact product, but from a different URL. So what I would suggest doing in this example is that we disable the dynamic URL uh, collection URL generation and this would mean that whenever someone clicks on a product from within a collection, they would land straight on the final version of the URL. The reason why I would suggest doing this is because it would make it a lot easier for Google to crawl through the site and understand that, okay, the main URL of, of this product page is this one. We don't need to, Google wouldn't need to do so much extra processing and to understand that these are not uh, that these are two of the same exact products just accessible from you know a different URL. So this would make it much easier for Google to process the site and crawl through it, and they wouldn't need to spend as much resources trying to understand you know that this is not uh, a duplicated page, but it's rather the same exact page. In terms of the actual page speed, I really like the Core of Vitals. So you guys have done a great job at just making sure that the Core of Vital assessment is being passed. One thing that I would point out is the page speed. So currently the page speed is just 22 out of uh, out of 100. If I'm not sure if you're on Shopify 2.0, but you, if you are, I would highly suggest just um, working on this a bit. I know it's uh, easier said than done, but uh, just may potentially like taking a look at some of the way the scripts load, deprioritizing some of the scripts, um, just optimizing some of the code, sizing the images properly. Um, there are quite a lot of savings to be had here. So just, you know, if, if we can optimize this a bit to get to at least 40 to 50, that would already be a big improvement, not only for SEO, but across the board. I mean, your conversion rates would go would go up across the board. So it's something that would be beneficial for all parts of the of the business. 
if I move quickly to on page and go to some of our collection pages, the single biggest opportunity that you're currently missing out on that would dramatically improve your rankings of your collection pages, especially which are ultimately your, your uh, biggest money makers, is the fact that you're missing the collection text. So if we were to add, let's say, a sentence or two at the top here and the rest of the text, which would be like three, four hundred words about flat benches with entities inside and entities are essentially just keyword variations of the word flat benches that Google wants to see in order to understand that you are covering the topic in, in detail and that you're including all the keyword variations inside. If when, when you add these texts, Google will essentially start to rank you for a lot more keywords and your overall rankings for the main keyword will go up as well, just because you will have more content on the page. This is your biggest opportunity right now across all of the opportunities that I mentioned, uh, especially because you have so many different collections. Even um, more importantly, so at the moment you have these packages page, if I just open it up here. And this packages page is currently ranking quite well for home gym equipment. So it started to do better and better for the keyword home gym equipment, which has 21,000 monthly searches. And the CPC is uh, pretty solid as well. So this means that this keyword is definitely converting. So in your case, from at least what from, uh, from what I saw, you don't have a, a collection targeting the keyword home gym equipment. You just have the equipment packages. So if we were to maybe reuse this collection or create an, another one, we would just need to include home gym equipment here. We would need to add some text. We would need to optimize these packages that you, that you have. Uh, to just display them probably in a similar way or the same way that you have them here, to be honest, and then just add the text. Last thing, just to link, link the home gym equipment somewhere inside of here, inside of the main menu, publish it, and I, I would feel very, very confident that we would start to rank extremely well for the home gym equipment keyword with 21,000 monthly searches which would be obviously a significant win. And this is what I feel is one of the biggest wins for you guys at the moment, is just expanding the number of overall collections that you have. Uh, in terms of the content, I went through it briefly and I have to say you're doing very, very well in regards to the, uh, to the content side of things. Um, I, really, I really like the way these articles are, are written. I really like the way these articles are written. They're written, they cover the topic in, in the perfect way. So that's, that's great to see. Uh, but you are missing on a few crucial things. So the first opportunity that I would like to point out is the fact that you can essentially turn all of these blog articles into a YouTube video as well alongside it. And then if you rank very well on Google and also on YouTube, Essentially, if you create these two pieces together, so if you add the blog post to the YouTube video description, and if you add the YouTube video to the blog post and embed it in here, you will start to perform better on both channels and you will start to dominate the keyword inside of both channels. So that would be something that I would highly encourage you to do. Uh, the next thing that you're currently really missing out on are call to actions. So you are essentially sending links to some of the products but you're missing out on inserting the products and embedding them inside of the actual blog post. Because if the product is embedded inside of the blog post, people will actually go and click to the product and potentially buy it. So that alone would mess, like would have a massive impact on your conversion rates from the blog posts. And even more importantly, you currently don't really have a lead magnet. So just by creating a pop-up with either an ebook or a discount code or really whatever, uh, as long as there is some value that is being provided to the user in exchange for their email address, you would be able to dramatically increase the number of overall emails that you get into your email flows. And that then you have another way to essentially convert the, the visitor into a, into a customer. Uh, most, the most important thing that you're currently not doing with the blog post is linking to your, to your, to your collection pages. I went through, I believe, like three to five different um, blog posts, and literally all of them are linking to product pages. 
And if we just compare the uh, the rankings between, let's say, product pages and, and collection pages, the collection pages have dramatically more rankings. Like you're just ranking for way more keywords, and they're bringing in a lot, a lot more traffic. So it just this kind of beats the purpose. It's like why are we prioritizing the products so much if instead we could be linking to the collection pages and boosting those up in the in the search results. Uh, since those are ultimately driving a lot more revenue and also organic traffic for you. So this would be something that I want to point out. In addition, I also want to just quickly go through your backlink profile. So on the surface, we have a very solid backlink profile. You have almost 3,300 different backlinks from a variety of different websites. Uh, and on the first glance, it looks very good. However, if I filter by DR or domain rank 50, which are which would, which would just filter out the links that are actually very high quality. There are only about 230 of these backlinks. Now, compare you guys to someone like Rogue Fitness, uh, also just looking at high quality links, so DR50+, DR50 and they have a thousand, almost 1,200, so a lot more backlinks that we could definitely um, use. So this would be one of the things that I would really pay more attention to. It would be it's the biggest driver uh, for growth after you know fixing up some of these issues that I that I pointed out. Um, one more suggestion that I would also have is in terms of the backlinks. There are currently a lot of broken backlinks. So backlinks that point up that point to pages that no longer work, backlinks that point to pages that uh, that have been re removed, renamed. Let me show you a few examples here. So for example, you had these 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic page, uh, you had the Athletes page, you had a bunch of different pages that have all been removed. And some of these links are actually very, very high quality. So you have links from Wikipedia, link from Men's Health, um, Garage Gym Reviews, uh, Barband.com, Rogue Australia. Some of these links are incredibly, incredibly powerful. And if I just open up a link like this, uh, sorry, my bad. I took the wrong website. Okay, my bad. Here's the correct one. Anyway, you have links to um, to a lot of these power racks. You have links to uh, bumper plates. Pretty much all of these different products that you used to have in stock, or maybe you they were renamed. You know, something changed, and a lot of these links. They're solid links, DR30, DR67, DR43, 47, 47, 88, which is a very, very solid link. And it's also going to a 404 page, right? So this is going to a 404 page and it's a very strong link that you're currently not taking advantage of. So all that you need to do here is just redirect all of these backlinks to a page that actually works and loads and you'd be able to recapture all of this link power. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of opportunity here just to use your existing backlinks that are not working to increase your overall domain authority and domain power. So these are, would be just a few of the opportunities that I would take a look at and start off with. Uh, overall, I think you, you're doing very, very well. You have a lot of existing assets that you just aren't monetizing as well as you could be. So I, I think if, if you just focus on some of these quick wins that I pointed out now, you would be able to do a lot, a lot better. I'm happy to walk you through uh, any, any of these and explain them further. Uh, and I bet that you know if we took a deeper look, we'd be able to find a lot, a lot more. So thank you again for your time. Have a good day. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.